run away. Come on, go up and eat. Your mother says get out of there. And the nice part about it, he really enjoys his work. Isn't that right, Ross? Every minute. Oh, well, that's what I need. Easy. Men who are happy in their work. Get this right there. Watch it. Hey, Sarge, after we finish eating, you think um, you have a minute we can talk? Yeah, sure. <laughs> investigation every every time I see the victims talking to the survivors the relatives and the worst part well you know talking to the kids and uh, really I can't sleep at night I keep seeing I keep seeing their faces like in an endless line well, you did it you left so I just tell me what's it like I don't know it's either easy or it's impossible it was easy. I haven't reached that point yet. Come on, you two. We can't enjoy it if you stay out there. Well, can we talk about this some more? Yeah, yeah. Finally sent the copy over to Naval Cryptography. Figured somebody over there could break it. Any chance the letter is from some kind of a crank? Yeah, probably. But you know Varric. Yeah. No chances. Proof. Ross, uh, about what you were telling me last night. Oh. Oh, we gotta just chalk it up to mail minute, boys. Are you sure? Yeah. Listen, do you have any idea what tambourine means? Oh, the guy in the letter, yeah. He was some sort of 14th century warrior. I think he called himself the Scourge of God. He's a very nice fellow, as I recall. Ross, Sarge, we just got a call. A couple of kids found a corpse out near Mavis Point. Woman, early 30s, hands tied behind her back, bullet in the back of her ear. Hey, that's not all. The left shoe was missing. And whoever did it scrawled the number on her foot. 330-24718. Come on, man. Yeah. Call the Navy boys and give them Mavis Point. It's two five-letter words, one next to the other. It might help them. This is my case. Your lucky day. Well, I guess we're going to get another letter. Yeah. Man doesn't go to all that trouble for just one murder. Sleep later this morning. Yeah, so did I, but I, I have to go. That was the whole point of last night, to relax you. Mm -hmm. well, you succeeded. You sure? Mm -hmm. Was it uh, dinner? It's all right. Dinner? Terrific. And the wine? The wine was terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, honey, it's just great. I gotta go. Honey, I gotta go. No, I gotta go. Oh, sadist. Yes, police brutality. Well, hurry back. There's another bottle of wine left. Tamerlane's second victim, the police still have no leads. Due to the method of execution, police psychiatrists continue to believe the murderer may be a veteran of the Southeast Asian War. You, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, you got a guy over there, and you tell him to kill, kill, and he comes back, he, he's just not going to stop. appeals to the killer have met with no response. 
Chief of Detectives Bernard Barrett remains optimistic Sure, that... sure, we support the police. We're all civic-minded. But when it gets to where you're afraid to answer the door any time of night... There's Detective something... Sergeant Ross Edmonds continues to spearhead the investigation. Ross, why didn't you take a sleeping pill? I already did. It doesn't help. Meanwhile, residents of the area are advised... Get Schumann Rausch in here. Thanks. Anything new? We went by last night, talked to the second girl's family. And? Yeah, not much. Recently divorced, moved back in with her folks. Now she'd been disconsolate, drinking a little too much. Boyfriends? None they knew about. Any luck with the psychiatrist? No. Nope. Our noble shrink points out the file on shoe fetishes from Southeast Asia is rather thin. What is this, your money for being funny, Roush? Hey, sorry. You've got a lot to be sorry for. So far, you haven't turned up anything, not a damn thing. The net result of your genius is the turning up of a second victim. Oh, look, Ross, come on. Well, we know you're feeling heat, but get off. Sergeant Edmonds to you. You're damn right I'm feeling the heat. And it comes from the commissioner down at Chief Verrick. From Chief Berwick to me, from me to you two, and that's the end of the line. And unless you two want to walk a beat, you better start coming up with something. Check the VA hospitals. We did already. Then check them again! And check the military bases! And check the two victims, maybe they got something in common. But you better come up with something. That's it. Carries pretty well out in the corridor. Yeah, somebody has to light a fire under them. It's like pulling teeth. Good try. They're not coming up with anything. Can't you replace them? Can't you give me anybody else? Not right now. You see this? A letter from Tamerlane. He's addressing it to me now, my perverted pen pal. You showed him this yesterday when I came in. Well, that's right. Thought about taking a day or two off? Yeah. Around 1980. Might relieve some of the pressure. Who's going to take over for me? Those two clowns? Or some of our super cops masquerading as citizens? Well, the media vultures out there that can't wait for another body to turn up? Feel better? Look, you gave me this case, and I could break it. I know you're feeling pressure, but don't relieve me, Barney. You owe me that. I want this one. Ed Edmund's here. Moved in. 
I'm, um, Wanda Harris. Stan Fourier. Nice to meet you. That's uh, French, isn't it? Yeah. Some people pronounce it Fourier. <laughs> like I uh, sold mink coats or something. Do you? Do I what? Do you sell furs? No. I work in a library. You're kidding. I am not. What's wrong with a library? Nothing. It's just that, <laughs> well, you know, you think of librarians as being little old ladies. Why don't we go somewhere where we can talk? I have always wanted to know what it's like to work in a library. <laughs> every dive in this town looking for you. I thought you said you weren't going to pull a stupid stunt anymore. Vernon, I would like for you to meet Mr. Stan Furrier. Glad to meet you. You want to wander's friend? I'm her husband, Buster. You never said you were married, Wanda. <laughs> she never does, unless it's to her advantage. It doesn't help much when you're trying to make a pickup, does it? Kiss off, Vernon! I got enough of that from you all day. If I want to enjoy myself a little bit. Look, Mr. Harris, I'm really very sorry. I, if, I, if I'd known you were married, I wouldn't have introduced myself. I, I, Wanda's a handsome woman. I don't guess you had any way of knowing. Yeah, with, with everything that's going on, the killings and everything, I didn't think it was a good idea for Wanda, Mrs. Harris, to uh, go home alone. I'll tell you something, Buster. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of my wife. And for that matter, I'm capable of taking care of you, too. So I suggest you get your tail out of here and fast. I don't care what the guy sells. I'm not interested in his inventory. Tamerlan wasn't given a 38 along with his discharge. He bought it somewhere. And I don't believe he came all the way to San Diego because it's a nice climate to kill people in. So you find out where he bought it. Keep looking. Check with me first thing in the morning. You know what they're trying to tell me? They can't follow the leads. You know what I told Varric? Replace the two of them. What he said, there's no men available. Things aren't like they used to be. What is, Roth? I don't know. I just used to think that the closer you got to retirement, the easier it got. What a dream that was, huh? So you want to talk, huh? Yep. Yep. All right. Why don't you come over to the house tonight about 8 o'clock for dinner? I'll tell Joyce to set an extra plate. That's an invitation. And it's accepted. See you later tonight.
found another body. Yeah, that's the same man. Numbers on the left foot, the whole thing. Well, Sarge is here. You, you gonna be home after a while? Honey, I haven't got time to think about that right now. Why don't you get started without me? Well, just leave something on the stove. Is everything all right? Yeah, I've got a third corpse on my hands. Don't you understand that? There's been another killing, so he won't be home for a while. He sound all right? Yes, fine. Look, let's not let all this food go to waste. I'll get the salad. This means you're going to have to eat a large casserole, Father. Fine. Give you and I time to catch up on things. Bless us, O Lord, for these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. He's been on the force 18 years. You know that? Mm -hmm. In all this time, he's never been like this. Well, he's handled rough ones before. Oh, I know. But this one is different somehow. Does he talk to you about it? No. I'd feel better if he did. At least that would be some kind of an outlet. But nothing. He comes home at night and he's exhausted. Won't eat his dinner. He doesn't want to watch television. Drags into the bedroom. Goes over those reports. Even if the lights are out, I can just almost hear him thinking in the dark. Has he said anything to you lately about his feeling for the force? No. Why? We had to talk about it once before. I thought he might have some more to say. Will you talk to him? Yes. Tomorrow, with no interruptions. Morning. Now we talk. You know, sometimes I get an important call. Then let somebody else handle it. There are other cops in this place. Look, if you're concerned about last night... Yes, I'm concerned about last night, and I'm also concerned about everything that's happened in the last ten days. Beric is worried, Joyce is worried, the two guys that are supposed to be working with you can't, and you're right, I'm concerned. I figured that the only one that you're listening to is Tamerlane, and he's not interested in your general welfare. All right, look, last night did get to me, but I found a way. What way? Look, what have we been doing around here? Show up. Nothing has. So we have to force a lead. What do you mean? I mean, look, you're a cop. You know what I mean. What if we get him, we bring him to trial, then what happens? Every lawyer with a jet plane's gonna fly down here and want to defend him. And every shrink in the whole state's gonna recommend hospitalization instead of imprisonment. And then what happens? Well, they start all their little legal maneuvering, try to set him free so he can hit the street again. Sounds like you'd rather catch him in the streets than shoot him. No, I don't want to shoot him. I don't want to kill him. I don't want public sympathy on his side. And that's what I'm worried about. He's going to give himself up. You know what I want to do? I want to nail him. I want to nail him when he's out there. But you yourself said that you didn't have a clue. We don't need one. I'm going to use the imminent arrest routine. And drive him straight underground. That's right. We're going to take an outpatient from the VA hospital, put him on television as the prime suspect, Ross, if you do that, I'd almost be willing to guarantee that Tamerlane will commit another murder just to prove you've got the wrong man. That's right. Look, I knew you'd understand. Just look at the victims. Every one of them was filled with alcohol. So the night we announce our phony suspect, we take the whole force, men and women, put them in civilian clothes, let them cover the whole city. And any John that tries to make a pickup that night, we're just going to haul them right in here. There is no way that you can cover every bar and cocktail lounge. Maybe we miss a few. Maybe force another killing? Maybe. But the chance we're going to have to take is a calculated risk. Look, you and I know the whole system's breaking down. There may be law, but there's no more order. And the longer this goes on, the worse it gets. So what if another hooker gets knocked off? So what? You know, I'd prefer that than the victim being a divorcee with a couple of kids. Ross, 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 if you could only hear yourself. I think you've lost all objectivity. It's no good for you, and it's worse for the investigation. You're not a cop anymore. You're a 
priest. Why don't you stay a priest and let me do my job? Look, I know I'm no psychiatrist, but the man is under too much strain. He's been there before. Not like this. He's a good cop. Correction. He was a good cop. Good cops don't talk the way he did an hour ago. Barney, I'm not worried about the case. I'm worried about him. He's always been like that. He, he needs to work. He thrives on it. Like a junkie thrives on H. Please, give him a week off. By the time he comes back, there's bound to be some kind of a lead. There's no disgrace in being relieved. Send Edmonds in, please. It stinks, Barney. All of it. Tell me something new, huh? I'd, uh, like to tell him in private. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll talk to him later, when I can make a little more sense. Father Cavanaugh? Charlie Sprill and choir. I'd like to ask you a question or two uh, as the chaplain. I'm in a bit of a hurry, Mr. Sprill. Well, 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 I was just wondering how the cops react to a case like this. I, I mean, doesn't it hurt morale when nobody can come up with anything? Not at all. The killer gives them a reason for coming to work in the morning. Besides which, it gives them a splendid opportunity to meet intelligent people like you. Good day, Mr. Sprill. Oh, Ross. Where are you going? Out. Thought we settled that last night. I stayed home last night. That's what we're going to do for the whole month, huh? For the whole year. What are you going to do? Pick up where you left off with that little queer with a French name? Maybe. Maybe not. Worry about it. Sergeant Edmonds, please. No, no, he doesn't know me. Uh, Vernon Harris. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sergeant Edmonds? Yeah, well, uh, listen, I, uh, I think I got something for you on this uh, Tamerlane thing, you know? Uh, Vernon Harris. Yeah, well, uh, the other night, this, uh, this guy tried to pick up my wife, you know what I mean? And uh, kind of a weird-looking guy with... Uh, with glasses, about 5'9", uh, maybe 140, 50 pounds. You, you got so many leads, you can afford to pass one up? Yeah, but when I busted in on him, I mean, he, he was standing there holding her shoe. Shoes? That's right, you heard me right, her shoe. Yeah, yeah, a uh, little red foreign job, sports car. What about the license plate? No, no, I, I, I didn't get that. Yeah, be glad to help. I mean, I hope you get him. Yeah, you bet.
your driver's license, please, sir. Monty. Hey, Monty, how are you? Uh, Sergeant Edmonds. Long way to come for a drink. You better believe it. Tough place to park. I've been driving around, driving around. I want to get a dent in my door. I'm more careful when it's my car, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Me and Everly, we heard about this Tamerlane thing. And uh, we're sorry. What I mean is, well, we're sorry about it, you know, about you getting taken off of it, I mean. Well, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe I'll get a fresh approach on the whole case. Yeah. Well, you're a long way from home, Sergeant, and uh, if you're going to tie one on, maybe you ought to go home and do it, huh? Yeah, maybe that is a good idea, Mike. No offense. No, no, come on. Good, I ran in there. Take it easy. Good night. You're very nice. I know. I'd be able to. resembles this car, we're checking everyone like it. <laughs> Let's see your registration, sure, please. Sure, sure, Thank sure, you. officer. I'll, I'll be glad to show it to you. What's going on, honey? He's checking out a stolen car. Can you take your hands out slowly, please? Thank you. Sure. Can I see his driver's license, please? Yeah, I, you'll find everything in order. You're right, Mr. Page. Everything is in order. I want to thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hey, what is this? You said your name was Fouillet. It says Marion Page here. Is this a gag? I got so many jokes under that. Come off page. it. I don't like a guy lying to me. If you lie about your name, who knows what else you're lying about. Oh, come on. There's no need to be upset. Go up to my place for a little cat. You can have your nightcap by yourself. And everything else by yourself. mean to push, but when was the last time you saw him? It was two days ago. It was the morning that Varick took him off the case. He called me that night, said he wanted some time by himself. But two days. And I just don't want to ask myself why. I guess I don't want to hear the answer. That he's been with another woman. Well, I don't think so. No, I don't want to either. But he doesn't drink, so I don't think they're going to find him in an alley somewhere. And if there'd been any kind of an accident, the police would have notified me. So I just don't know what the answer could be. Why else would he disappear for two days? Did he die? Eddie, Charlie, use the lead. Two maniacs out there. Right. Yes, sir. But Beric, Beric got the letter. Now, get over with it. I know who you are, Tamerlane. You're going to get it. In my own way and in my own time. I want him to be awake all night, every night. No signature, Beric. Uh, the the no, usual no, no comment. Yeah. All right. All right. Now tag it with maybe a second madman can do what the cops have been unable to do so far. I really thought that taking him off the case would relieve the strain. It didn't. If anything, it had increased it to the breaking point. I grant that. We were wrong. It's still a long way from that to him being the one who wrote the letter to Tamerlane. Now, if you had the fact that he's disappeared, that he wants Tamerlane awake as much as he's been, which is all the time. If you're right, and I hope you're not, you have any idea what this could do to morale? It'd be worse if something went wrong. No, thank you. So what do I do? Tell all departments to send an APB out on him because we think he's flipped? What if it turns out that he's just gone off on a bench? Well, stranger things have happened. No need. I can have Joyce Edmonds file a missing person's complaint. That's all they need to know. They can draw their own conclusion. Which might be a heck of a lot worse than the truth. Well, let's hope so. In the meantime, I can dig for something that Ross might have kept to himself. You do trust me to keep my mouth shut. No. 
What are the choices I got? Father Cavanaugh, Valerie, tell the bishop I'm going to be gone a day or two. No, I know he won't like it, but tell him I'll explain when I get back. Right. Bartender, I'm looking for a guy. He could have used any one of these names, but this is what he looks like. You seen him around here? I mean, it's a birthday, it's just a guess. Come on. Come on. Just a guess. All you have to do is be there and you can take off to whatever you want to do. Okay? Come on, don't you ever see him? Come on, I'll take about 10 minutes of your time. It's all it takes. No, I don't think so. Is it worth 20 bucks to you? Hey, I said no. I said, isn't it worth 20? What about 30? You want 30? I said no, and I mean it. I said no. You want to do it? Hey, listen. When I say no. Okay, man. Add your dime. Shall we? I know you don't like what I've done. But if you want to settle this, you meet me tonight at 11 o'clock. There's a vacant warehouse. Just pass Los Rios and Carpenter. You be there. Why? What reason? You read my letter. I have my reason. But if I don't come, what, what then? Well, you better come. I'm the only one who can identify you. I know you're the killer. Now, if you want to stay in the clear, you have to kill me. Not a thing. Those people that called in really didn't have any information. You sure this is the whole list? Right up until last Friday when you relieved them. Was anyone who called in at home? Maybe, but there's no way we can tell. Joyce would have told me if she'd gotten any message. Wait a minute. What? It's been way too long. I should have done this in the first place. 
Shirley, do we have the telephone list from last week? Would you bring him in here, please? If he'd been the lead that meant something, after you relieved him, he wouldn't have written it down. He would have had to have done it himself. The operator might have logged it in. Harris. Vernon Harris. Officers have spotted the red sports car heading south on the Oceanside Freeway. They have established contact and are maintaining surveillance. That's about five minutes from here. We should be able to pick them up around 57. What do you got? Tamerlane. Then keep it down. Okay. Barney, tell you, break it. And all the evidence is in this room. That's the shoes, the encoder, all of it. It's an airtight case, Barney. And no lawyer, no psychiatrist could put a dent in it because it's airtight. I tell you, you could trust me, Barney. It's all over. It's all over, Barney. Hey, you want to... 
want to go call Joyce? Yeah. You want to take him home? Yeah. I'll have him with the psychiatrist first thing in the morning. Guess that's all we can do. Pray a lot. Yeah, and them too.